Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. At no point did the police say you have to shut this down, and we said no. So my, my question is, if this was such a concern in a matter of safety and protecting society, why didn't they come down there earlier and say, hey, guys, you can't do this? Or middle of the production say, hey, guys, this has to stop. Right. They, al- they allowed it to happen so they could attempt to ticket us. And that's, that's a frustrating part on it. It wasn't a matter of public safety. It was a matter of enforcement and punishment. Regular viewers of my work here at Rebel News will know that I'm, well, I'm passionate about a few things. But today, two of my oldest passions in life are colliding in one story. Those passions are fighting government overreach and professional wrestling. Now, for those of you who are unaware, here at Rebel News, we're doing our very best to help as many people as possible, who receive a COVID violation fine through a special website. That website is fightthefines.com. If you get a ticket, don't pay it. Plead not guilty and fight that ticket by sending it to us at fightthefines.com. And we will put you in touch with a top criminal lawyer who will take on your fine. Now, back to wrestling meets government overreach. Danny Warren, also known by his wrestling name as Hotshot Danny Duggan, is a professional wrestler and wrestling promoter. And he just got the standard nearly $1,300 Manitoba COVID violation fine for filming a wrestling event in a closed facility. Now, I'll let Danny tell you the full story. Check it out. Danny, why don't you give us um, the Coles Notes version of what you were doing, that normal thing that everybody used to be allowed to do that all of a sudden in the age of the coronavirus pandemic is completely illegal. Um, Why don't you give us those details? We're putting lives at risk. That's what we're doing, (laughs) supposedly. Uh, So we had a wrestling event. Uh, CWE is a a live touring company that goes across Canada, uh, British Columbia through Quebec, producing live events. That, That business has been completely gutted this past year with all the restrictions and lockdowns and things of that nature. Uh, But we did have an event that was scheduled to take place December 4th in Winnipeg in front of a live audience in front of a limited capacity uh, based on the the capacity restrictions that were allowed at the time. Um, That event was supposed to be an event that was not only for the live audience, but being taped for DVD distribution as well as a TV project we're working on. Um, Unfortunately, about a week out, I believe, or two weeks out from that event, Uh, capacity restrictions changed, public gatherings are no longer allowed. So we moved the event to our private training facility. It's in a locked gated area, barbed wire on the fences, doors locked, nobody's getting in and out uh, unless they're a part of our staff. And uh, we decided we're gonna go ahead and continue with the production of the event uh, for our TV pilot that we're working on. Um, And based on our knowledge of the public health act that was released, I believe line 70, all productions that began prior to November 12th were able to proceed production. Ours began production with video on October 28th. So all things considered, we were in the clear. And just to be very clear, we've had to work with multiple uh, regional health inspectors um, and politicians in Manitoba and Alberta uh, to produce about 20 live events in 2020 that we were able to pull off. So we're very well familiar with the the rules, the regulations, uh, the guidelines that have to be put in place when dealing with people in a public space during this time. So it's not something that we're doing by the seat of our pants. We, we've done our homework. We, we know right down to the amount of bleach we have to have in our cleaner to, to clean surfaces. And we have had inspectors come down and test that at live events, which we never thought you'd see at a wrestling event before. Um, so we, we, we proceeded with the production of our event. It was, it was advertised publicly that we we're gonna be doing this. We were not hiding it from anybody um, because it is you know, a fan participation project uh, that we'd be filming this on December 4th. We didn't disclose the location. So there was no chance of anybody from the public showing up or trying to be involved in the filming of the production. It was a close set to our wrestlers and our staff. And we proceeded to go ahead with that event. Um, So fast forward to December 4th, um, the event went live at 7 p.m. on a Friday. Right around that time, we had multiple police cars show up to our events to investigate what was taking place. Um, 
us having no fear in the situation because we knew we were legally allowed to operate based on the guidelines that were released by our very government went out to, to talk. Um, actually, I should back up a little bit. They did go onto the property uh, unwelcomed. Uh, like I mentioned, our, our, our train facility is in a gated area that is locked, barbed wire on the top of the fences. Um, they were sitting on the outside of that fence watching people come in and out. Um, weren't welcomed in, didn't ask to come in at any point. But when one of our performers showed up late, they tailed them so closely to their bumper to get inside the, the grounds. There was no way of, you know, denying them entry at that point. So they were now on the grounds. And once, once on the grounds, we, we were completely cooperative. Uh, we went out and talked to them and, and answered questions. And we explained to the officers what we were doing. We had our paperwork filled out. Uh, sorry, we had our paperwork printed out for, uh, with the, the Public Health Act order. Uh, when our production began. And then there was, uh, you know, to, to their credit, the police on scene were, were very cooperative. They, they were, I think they, they, from what I understood, were informed on the tip line of our events, which He's we the believe snitch be, line. <laughs> yes, which we, which we, we know pretty much with certainty was one of our competitors in our industry trying to get the event canceled. So from what I understood, they were told there was going to be an event held with over 100 people at this facility. So by by their uh, job, they had to come down and, and look into what was going on. So they were there just doing their job, so to speak. Sure. Um, but then there was a bylaw officer that was there with them who wasn't as accommodating and had a stack of tickets that he was ready to hand out before speaking to anybody. He was ready to fire those off and give those out. So after speaking with the police, and this went back and forth for, for a good hour because they wanted to come on, they asked if they can come inside the production facility. Uh, we told them they could not. Um, they asked if we were denying them entry. We said, well, do you have a warrant? They said they do not. We said, well, we're going to request that you do not enter the facility. And uh, they once again asked why. And he said, well, we're streaming live. This is a live broadcast. If you go into that facility right now, you will be live to the world coming in to investigate what you're here for, um, which I was all for. I, I told sure. our staff, if, 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 there's, if there's police officers that come in here and start ticketing or arresting people, please keep the cameras rolling and let yeah. the world see it because it's absolutely absurd that this is happening. Um, so a little sidebar, as this is happening, directly across the street uh, from our training facility, there is an intersection car accident that takes place. While this is going on, one cop car, from outside of this goes in response to this while 14 cop cars are inspecting <laughs> men in tights, uh, putting society in danger while there's a legitimate car accident and people in legitimate harm literally feet away. Um, so while this is taking place, um, one of my associates is going back and forth because I'm producing the event and the director of the event. So um, as, as we're going through this, the, the police officers told us, it looks like we've done our homework. We're not in violation of anything they're not going to enforce any tickets today. The bylaw officer believed we were, and we asked why. And he said, well, you're not a registered film production with, with Manitoba Film. And we said, well, you don't have to be. And he says, yes, you do. And he said, no, you do not need a film permit in Manitoba to film on private property. Um, so he was under the belief, unless you were registered with the government to produce with the film board, you weren't exempt to this. And then nowhere on that, that, public health order it says that it simply says film production yep. um, it, it doesn't specify that you need to be a part of this association or have this permit we are a film production an independent film production filming legally on grounds that we rent the property of um, and he didn't feel that was suffice and wanted to hand out tickets the police told him they're not going to ticket us and he advised them he advised the bylaw officer in fact that he should leave because they're going to leave and he, they're not going to be there to back him up to hand out these tickets so he leaves. No tickets are handed out. Something else that we found, uh, you know, very interesting during all of this is they were they 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 were upfront with us that they were tipped off that this event took place, or was going to take place and be be happening. They knew who I was. They knew who some of my associates were. They knew where it was. So this event was such a danger to society, and we we're at risk of, of harming so many citizens uh, in our city. Why were they not there prior to the production to shut right. this thing down? Why were they not down there to say, hey, guys, what's going on? Hey, this is not allowed. we got to close up shop. At no point did we say we're not going to uh, – we're going to defy your order and continue filming. They, they, at no point did the police say you have to shut this down, and we said no. 
So my, my question is, if this was such a concern in a matter of safety and protecting society, why didn't they come down there earlier and say, hey, guys, you can't do this? Or middle of the production say, hey, guys, this has to stop. Right. They, al- they allowed it to happen so they could attempt to ticket us. And that's, that's a frustrating part on it. It wasn't a matter of public safety. It was a matter of enforcement and punishment. Um, so fast forward, we, you know, the, we were told, um, like I said, by the police, there'd be no tickets handed. He allowed us to finish our event. As far as we're concerned, everything's all in well. You know, we followed protocol. Everyone in the facility was wearing masks. Everybody filled out their uh, contact tracing form in the building. We did everything by the book because we knew if there was anything that was going to happen, we wanted to have our asses covered. So that's exactly what we did. And it was over and done with. Fast forward, I believe three days later, um, I'm, I'm at my home on, I believe, a Monday night. I'm on the phone. I'm taking a call. I leave my house. There's a, there's a vehicle outside my house. I don't think anything of it. I get in my car. I drive away to, to somewhere I need to go. And as soon as I leave my house, they then get out of the vehicle, this police officer, a bylaw officer, and go and wake up my sleeping toddler um, and harass my spouse to try to issue her the ticket trying to harass her for identification and her full name, who has nothing to do with this production, has nothing to do with the event, and, you know, give her a tough time because she's not being forthcoming with this information because she has no no reason to. She doesn't owe them an identification. She doesn't owe them anything. So they, they gave her the ticket after they very well could have gave it to me. They were three feet away from me, waited for me to leave. You know, like I mentioned, woke up my toddler, gave it to them, and... All, and when she wouldn't give her full name, she gave her first, their answer was, well, just make sure he gets this. And that was the, the handing out of the ticket. And, uh, and that's, that's where we're at today. And uh, now fast forward uh, to, you know, just a few hours ago, I was contacted by the owner of the compound unit. They were issued a $5,000 ticket for allowing the event to be produced on their property. Now, these are people that own the building who have no idea what was taking place that day. They had no knowledge of what was going on, whether it's right or wrong, illegal or illegal. They didn't know it was taking place, yet they were hit with a $5,000 ticket. Now they're expecting our tenant to pay that we lease the facility from um, because they're being pressured and you know bullied into, hey, you broke a public enforcement law, a public health act. So it, it continues on and it, it's just absolutely mind boggling to me. That'd be like, to, when, I, when I saw this, my, my exact thought was that would be like somebody renting a facility or sorry, renting a home from somebody, selling drugs in it. They get arrested for selling drugs and then you arrest the landlord too. That, that, it's completely irrational, but that's, that's where we're at with this stuff. Right. But selling drugs is illegal. <laughs> and I don't think what you did <laughs> was You're illegal. Right. And you know what? I, I want to tell you, um, please send me the information of uh, the owner of the building, because I'd love to help them with that $5,000 fine, too. I mean, that is outrageous. Danny, what was the amount of your ticket in the end? I believe $1,296. Yeah, that's the standard Manitoba ticket these days. You guys are athletes, just like, I don't know, NHL players or world junior hockey players. And those events are allowed to proceed because they have a, a set of guidelines that they're following, much like the set of guidelines that you guys are following. You guys are professional athletes. Um, and yet you are being excluded from you know, being able to practice your sport and earn an income. I think that's the worst part of this. It's not just about your sport. It's about earning an income and providing for your family. So Danny, that's why I'm extending an offer to you. I don't want you to pay this ticket. I want you to plead not guilty. And we are going to put you in touch with a top criminal attorney to fight this ticket. Because I think across the country, one of the most authoritarian governments right now is Brian Pallister's in Manitoba. And I think they need to be taught a lesson. And I think we are probably just the people to do it. And so I want to let you know that we are going to put you in touch with that top criminal lawyer at no cost to you. We'll crowdfund it through our fightthefines.com portal. And uh, I just want you to keep doing what you do best. And that's putting on a great show. Well, not guilty. You've got my endorsement. I'm on board for making this happen. Uh, like, like you said, our industry has been affected ravishly. I haven't done the exact numbers yet, but you know, my personal income is probably down about 90% oh. from last year, and it's been a struggle to say the least. This is the this past this past. You know, rent was due January 1st. This is the first time in my adult life 
that I wasn't able to make my rent. And that was a very, very frustrating feeling as a perfectly healthy, capable, uh, you know, near 34 year old man who's able to go out and work and is willing to go out and work and provide for my family. And I'm not being able to give the option to, and it's, it's beyond infuriating. And there's got to come a point where this, this silliness stops. Danny, um, thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you very much for your support. Now this cannot stand, especially when, as I'm filming this video today, authorities have figured out a way for other professional, semi-professional, and even amateur sports to proceed safely, or so they say. Right now, the World Junior Championships of Hockey are happening in both Edmonton and Red Deer, Alberta. Wrestlers have always been able to measure risk versus reward. They do it every day in the ring. So why would the coronavirus be any different? Danny says he's been careful, he's been compliant, and yet, apparently, that's not good enough for the Manitoba government. And you heard him. He said he's taken a 90% pay cut this year while the government has gone out of its way to sort out issues happening in other professional sports to allow those professional sports to go forward. They've left the wrestlers out of the mix. It's going to give me a lot of joy, I'll be honest, to put Premier Brian Pallister's out-of-control government back in its place. Pallister should be worrying about the elderly and the vulnerable amongst Manitoba society and not some of the most athletically strong and physically fit people amongst us, like Danny and the wrestlers that he works with every single day. That's why I'm helping Danny fight this fine. If you'd like to contribute to the legal cause to help Danny maybe even go so far as to free his entire industry and get those wrestlers back to work again by fighting this fine, please go to fightthefines.com and contribute today. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. If you've received a coronavirus fine for doing something that was completely legal 10 short months ago, if you've received a fine for just minding your business and going about your life like a normal person, don't pay it, fight it. Plead not guilty and send it to me at fightthefines.com. And if you'd like to help those people who have received a coronavirus fine fight back, you can donate to their legal fees on that special website, fightthefines.com.